somewhat of a surprise coming out of Ireland. Cahal Pendred, UFC fighter, announced his retirement. He did so via Twitter. And of course, we love having him on the show. Wanted to talk to him about that and where he goes from here. He is joining us via the magic of Skype right now. Let's go there and talk to Cahal Pendred himself. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Ari. Okay, well, congratulations on this uh, milestone for you. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major point. I know in every fighter and, and athlete's career, you get to walk out on your own terms, um, perhaps a little sooner than you expected. Why did you announce your retirement last week? Um, I've just been, been thinking about it for a while. And, and uh, like I said, when I announced it, I just felt like the fire in my belly had kind of dwindled a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I, I always talked about how I felt very fortunate that I was pursuing a passion and, and, you know, it didn't feel like I worked, but it started to feel like it had become a job and I was, I was turning up at the gym, not because I wanted to, but because I had to and, and, and I had to get paid at the end of the day. So, uh, you know, I have, I have other, other, other passions that are kind of coming to the forefront now and, and um, I just decided, you know, you can't half be in, in MMA if you're, you're only going to get yourself hurt when, you, when you're you're half-heartedly fighting or just turning up for a paycheck. So I decided it was time to pursue other ventures and, uh, and move on. When did you start to feel this way? When did you start to feel like the fire was going away? Um, the last couple of months, I suppose. I, I had been planning on taking uh, quite quite an extended break after after my last fight. Um, you know, I, I just felt like I pushed myself very hard for... You know, the first year I, I was in in the OC and I needed a bit of a break, and then just the way things transpired, and I have uh, you know the business ready to uh, to open up now, and I was taking a lot of my time. And you know, the thing with MMA is, like I said, you can't half-heartedly be in it. It's not just it's not like another other professions where you just have to turn up at the gym and uh, and and train hard there, and that's it. It's it consumes your life. It's 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 a lifestyle. You know, every everything you do revolves around around the uh, the sport and you know being in p- peak physical shape and eating right and you know if you don't do that right, um, it, it doesn't work. Look at people who have messed up, like you know, not not to to point or to uh, you know not to point fingers or anything, but you look at people like Johnny Hendricks who maybe let things slip and then your weight goes out, balloons up and you you, can, you have to be on on point all the time and and. Uh, it was starting to to get to a point where I I couldn't uh, give all, devote all my time to it, and and I wouldn't um, as a result be at the best that I could be. So I just said, "This is time to to move on." Did you start to feel this did way leading up to way? the Tom Breeze fight in Dublin, or did what happened in Dublin a month ago or so really, you know, make you start to feel this way? Yeah, you know, I'd be lying if I said the the loss didn't didn't hurt and, and um and uh you know I, I obviously was devastated but it, you know I thought thought into it and why it happened and um you know the the training I put into it beforehand like I said the, I wasn't enjoying it. it it wasn't a passion anymore uh it become a job and, and I was driving to the gym you know every day and, and uh you know I wasn't excited about it like I had been in the past so um you know, I have different things in my life now that, that excite me and I decided it was time to call a day and I think it's, you know, it was a hard thing to do and I think a lot of fighters don't do it when they feel like that passion has dwindled that they, they don't admit it to themselves and they keep on going and ultimately they're just doing it for the paycheck and, and uh, as a job and that never works out well so it was a hard thing to do but I think it was the right thing to do. Hopefully you feel like this is a fair question. Uh, you were on a two-fight losing streak. Obviously not your best performances. I think you would agree with that. If you did continue to fight, are you confident that your next fight would have been in the UFC? Or you know, did you have a conversation and did they say to you to go elsewhere and maybe that's what led to the retirement? No, I, 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 I'm not 100% sure what, what the UFC's plans were with me were. I, I just know what my plans were. And... Um, like I said, it was just I didn't just didn't want to continue doing it uh, and not be be fully in it. You can't you can't fight and uh, you know with one foot in the door and and and, and be consumed elsewhere. So it, it was just my decision and decided this is not what I want to do. 
Did you know that night in Dublin on October 24th that that was it for you? No, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I, I had thoughts about it. But I definitely knew that I wouldn't fight for, I was thinking, at least six months. Because, you know, I pushed myself hard. I had five fights in, no, sorry, six fights in 15 months. And it was very tough in the body. And, and I just felt like I needed, not just the body as well, just the mind, just constantly being in, in fight camps. I felt like I needed a break after that. But um, I, I definitely didn't know it was going to be my last time. Can you tell us about, you know, the process that led to you on that Thursday afternoon going to Twitter and writing? I mean, did you have like, a, a, you know, an all-nighter, talk to your loved one, talk to your mom, who we're big fans of, of course, and we say hello to her. Uh, I mean, did, did you, how did, how did it get to the point where you went to Twitter and posted that message? Uh, yeah, I just spoke to, I just spoke to my, uh, my loved ones as well as I talked to my, to my, uh, my brother who's, you know, one of my closest friends and um, my girlfriend and my mom and my dad and I just kind of said it to them and, and you know, they, like every, everything I've, I've done in my life, they just supported me. They didn't try and argue one way or the other. They said, look at this, what you want, want to do, we're 100% behind you. So, um, you know, that was that. And I just kind of wrote out my reasonings for, for doing it and uh, posted it and, you know, I got an incredible reaction from 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 everyone, all the fans, and and uh, very supportive, and you know they thanked me for for everything, and uh, yeah, it was emotional then, just reading everything. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I I, I, I kind of nearly wanted to say, okay, no, I'm going back, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a response, but no, it was the right thing to do, and, and uh, you know I had an incredible journey. It was I started off. I was just a fan, an MMA fan, and, and um, watching the sport on TV, and I just transpired and went from one thing to another. I ended up being a fan, and then I was I was a UFC fighter, uh, rubbing shoulders with people that I once was just a teenager looking on on the TV and thinking these guys are heroes, and uh, uh, it was an incredible experience to to go from that uh, and something I always look back on real fondly. You're 28, right? Yeah. When you started this journey, when you became a pro, in the back of your mind, did you say, I don't want to fight till I'm 30? Like, were you expecting this, or is this a little sooner than you were expecting? Oh, if you had said it to me six months ago, I would have said, um, you know, early 30s. I never wanted to go on too long. I think you've a, you've a shelf life as a fighter. So you look at someone like Randy Couture, he, you know, I think he only started in his 30s and went on his, on to his, to his 40s with you got a shelf life there. I, I, I started fighting professionally, I think, 21 or 22. I a good six or seven years fighting professionally. And uh, I had a great time. But it, it was the time, you just know. I, I, I'd i been thinking about it, and that ultimately was was um, everything I needed to know. If, you, if you're a fighter and you, you start asking yourself the question, should I be doing this any longer? I think that's... That answers it for you if you're asking yourself a, this right. question. Yeah, as, right. a fighter, as a fighter, you have to have this unparalleled passion inside you, just driving you, and I didn't have that anymore. Obviously, I didn't see all the messages that came your way afterwards, but I did look at your Twitter mentions and your Instagram, and um, it was, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was very nice. It was, it was great to see these fans supporting you, and, and we all know that the Irish fans are some of the very best, if not the best, when it comes to supporting their own. But to me, the one that like actually almost made me emotional was what your longtime friend and teammate Conor McGregor wrote about you. I mean, I thought he summed it up perfectly. How did you react when you read that? Yeah, like I said, I, I got emotional when I saw a lot of the messages, but that one in particular, I mean, he's uh, pe people don't take credit for how much of a wordsmith he is, but he, he gets you summed everything up there uh what i've done and, and um you know it was very heartfelt what he said and, and uh, i'm very very appreciative but you know, i got a bit emotional reading that it was it was an incredibly nice message for him we've talked about this uh you're 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 a polarizing figure in this sport there are fans who love you others who you know aren't fans for whatever reason did that? Did all that get to you at some point? Was that? I mean, it's 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 annoying. It's tough. You social media comes right to your doorstep. Did any of that contribute to this decision? No, definitely not. I mean, I, I, yeah, definitely. Like you said, I'm a polarizing figure. But um, when you're when you're in the spotlight in anything, you get 
you, you, you get haters. The bigger you get, the more haters you get. And I, I learned to uh, accept that earlier, early on. Um, but no, that definitely, I wouldn't have let that influence me whatsoever. Why, now that you've had time to think about it, why do you think that is? Why do you think you were so polarizing? Um, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, re- I really don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know if I was so polarizing. I think, you know, there, there was uh, there was different articles and, and, and stuff came out um, that made it look like that I, I, I was... Uh, Felt I was getting attacked, but I, I never, I never, I never felt like I was getting much more hate than than, than many others, to be honest. Okay, um, so what are your plans next? Twenty eight years old, you're a young guy, you've got your whole life ahead of you. What are you going to do next? Um, well, I've, you know, m- most of the money I made in the UFC, had six fights, and obviously had that hundred grand bonus in the first fight. I put all of it away, and, and I've been planning for a while to to set up a business and I'm doing that now. Uh, I'm setting up a, a salad bar. It's a, it's a very popular chain in, in Dublin at the moment called Chucked. Um, they're like a salad bar. It's kind of healthy fast food. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm setting up one of those now in the city centre. It should be open in the next couple of months. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so that's taking, my, that's taking up my time um, for the next couple of months. But there you are know, so many things I want to do. I do, you know, I do a lot of writing and... and in the Irish media and since I've retired I've got loads more offers asking me to write for different outlets and um, you know I want to do analytical work tomorrow I'm going into Satanta Sports to you know package the, all the UFC stuff over here in Ireland and I'm doing a um, like a breakdown show on, on UFC 194 so I'm excited about that and that's something I'd like to do in the future as well uh, I've also you know I've, I've done acting in the past it's something that I was I always had an interest in and uh, I've done some stuff in the last couple of years, movies and TV shows, and I've actually had to turn down stuff because you know I was in training for for fights. So that's something I'll I'll pick up on as well. So you're gonna join the media dark side. I like that. We welcome you with open arms. I've read your stuff. <laughs> it's great. Come over to the yeah. dark side. Um, by the way, I, I saw John Cavanaugh, your longtime coach, write something very briefly on Twitter. Did you have a conversation with him? I know he's in California now, but considering what he's meant to your career, did you speak to him on the phone or via any other means to tell him this in person? Yeah, I, I spoke with him and told him obviously before. Uh, I didn't just go and announce it and not tell. <laughs> not tell. So, uh, um, yeah, no, he, he kind of... I don't know if he saw a coming bar, but he seemed to be he didn't seem to be too shocked and uh you know, obviously he wished me all the best and you know, we're still gonna be uh, he he's he, he's a friend to all of us, um, in his students. We we don't have like a some some coaches have like a, a father son type relationship. We're we're more like uh, it's a it's a friends type relationship we have with John and I'm will remain to to be like that and I'm still gonna train out in the gym. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, MMA started off as a hobby for me, then it turned into my, to my job. But now I'm going to revert back to it, to it being my hobby again, and and uh, I'm going to keep in there with the guys for for as long as I can. I keep trying with them. Considering how fresh all of this is, do you think it will be difficult to watch UFC 194? <clears throat> um, no, I'm 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 just the most excited I've been for a card in a long time. It's an incredible card. I'm going over. And uh, I can't wait to see Kanye unify those belts and and, uh, and go out and celebrate with them afterwards. So you'll be there in what capacity? Just as a as a fan supporting your friends? Just as a fan support my friends. Yeah, that had been the plan even before I made that decision. I was going out and because uh, uh, the last time, you know, um, during the summer UFC 199, I was there. It was an incredible experience, and I could see what it was. Uh, how much of an incredible experience it was, but I couldn't partake in the kind of sure uh, the fan side of it, and you know a little bit envious of that. So I wanted to this time do it that that way. So uh, I'm I'm going over with a few buddies of mine. I've got tickets and can't wait for it. It's, it's probably the best card the UFC has ever had. Yes, and don't forget about your other teammate uh, Gunnar Nelson fighting Damian Maya in a huge fight yeah. on that card as well. Yeah, it's an incredible it's an incredible card. That that fight. And then the the, the Wyman Rock Hall. Like, yes. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's an amazing car. 
let us just pray that nothing else happens as far as injuries. Okay, um, last thing. Uh, you look back, tremendous career. People could only dream of a career like yours. 17 and 4, you fought in the UFC, you're on the Ultimate Fighter, you've won belts in other organizations. When, when you walk away from the sport, what's the greatest memory of them all? Could have been one in the cage while you were fighting, could have been one in the locker room, in the gym. Is there something that sticks out that you'll be telling your kids and grandchildren about? Obviously, my UFC debut was was was, was fairy tale stuff. But I think um, for me, what was the most incredible experience of it all was being part of the MMA, you know, forefront when when it went from obscurity in Ireland to the mainstream. And that whole journey was was just incredible. Like I said to you before, four five years ago, journalists wouldn't wouldn't touch an interview with us. Uh, you know, any of us fighters and. Anytime MMA was mentioned in the press, it was something bad to do with it. You know, it was referred to as cage fighting. Now, now MMA in Ireland is like a, it's like a mainstream sport, and the, the fighters in the UFC are like household names, and and uh, you know that journey of of how it went from there from A to B was was incredible. That's I, I think the the best thing I'll take from it. Yeah. Uh, you are you are a pioneer of uh, Irish MMA, and not a lot of people can say that about where they're from. I'll never forget. I mean, that Dublin event was one of the greatest I've ever attended and covered. Uh, your fight, your comeback win over Mike King, a huge part of that. Seeing you at the press conference, you know, with the the busted eye and just you know on the winner side of things was uh, was a, was a beautiful sight. It was a great thing and and something that I'm sure is. Uh, is going to be a part of your memories for a very long time. Uh, I remember when you were on the show, when you were trying to get into the UFC, when you were part of that documentary series and there was a camera crew following you. So it's been a lot of fun watching this journey, even though I got into it a little bit late, but I wish you the best, Kyle. Always a pleasure. You're always a class act. And, uh, you know, I must say, I kind of smiled when I saw your old friend CM Punk send you a tweet as well, giving you the respect. The beef is no more, and you guys can, uh, can, can bury that hatchet. I thought that was very nice as well. Appreciate you coming on. Wish you the best, and hopefully I'll run into you in Las Vegas next week. Thanks, Harry. That was a nice chat. Thank you. All right, there he is. Kahal Pendrin, now retired UFC welterweight, 17-4 uh, and four record with one draw. Uh, walks away from the UFC on a two-fight losing streak, but if you were, if you were in attendance that night, when he fought my king at what was then called the O2 in Dublin, that was a magical comeback. When he beat my king after almost getting obliterated early in the fight, of course, that fight somewhat marred for my king uh, because he tested positive, failed his post fight drug test. But w w when, when Kahal Pendred defeated my king that night, you just knew. Honestly, and this is something that, you know, sports people say, oh, you had some, something that was in the air. No, no, no. You felt it. You felt it that night that something special was going on for, for the Irish fighters and fans. That was, I mean, one of the greatest comebacks ever. I don't think anyone would, would argue with that. Really special stuff. So nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, a champion in Cage Warriors fought hard to get into the UFC, and I think he would be the first one to tell you. I, I know that, as, as, as we just talked about, a polarizing figure, and some thought that he you know, got some, some unfair decisions that should have gone his opponent's way, that he wasn't the best, all that stuff. Worked his ass off to get to the UFC with not the same kind of skill set as some of his counterparts, and, uh, and was just kind of that workhorse. And you know, you walk away with a 17-4 record, well done. Congratulations on that. So uh, appreciate his time and uh, wish him the best in the future in his quote-unquote future endeavors.